Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to the channel. This is the Procon Geek and in today's video we are going over the basics of detailing reinforced concrete according to the code of practice. So without wasting too much time, let's get right into it. But first, remember, if this is your first time, please subscribe to the channel so that you get every video as soon as I upload it and also remember to leave a like and a comment in the box below. With that said, let's go. So the first thing you need to understand about detailing is that it's not just about drawing lines and circles in any way that you want. The goal of detailing is to produce a drawing so that other people can interpret your design and implement it even when you're not there. And also, it gives you a record of what you did for future reference. Now, there are so many rules in any code that has to do with detailing, but I have singled out a few of them from the South African Code of Practice for Detailing Reinforced Concrete. So, let's look at the first important one, which is Clause 3.7. So, it's about concreting and it says, you need to ensure that the reinforcement is so spaced as to allow the placing and the efficient consolidation of the concrete. What this just means is that the spacing of your bars should not be too small such that you are not able to fit a standard vibrator or poker in between the bars. The standard size that you mostly come across in the industry is about 40 to 100 millimeters. So whenever you are designing and your computer program gives you a design that needs say 2000 square millimeters per meter and it suggests Y12s for you at a spacing of 50 millimeters. Well, that will not work well for you. So the best thing is to understand that yes, you need 2000 square millimeters per meter, but you can achieve that by providing instead Y16s at a spacing of 100 millimeters center to center or even Y20s at a spacing of 150 center to center spacing. So that is one thing you need to be mindful of before you accept any automatically generated bending schedule either in Procon or any other computer program. Next, we shall look at clause 4.2.2 which is placing and bar notation. So you might have seen some shop drawings or reinforcement drawings before you watch this video and you may have been wondering what are all those letters and numbers next to the lines and circles on your drawings trying to say. Well, to help you understand, let's start with the numbers and letters that are usually closest to your reinforcement. For example, let's pick this one, 7Y16s dash 01 dash 250 bracket p2 bracket well the seven stands for the number of bars that you're going to place then the y stands for the type of steel of the bar then the 16 stands for the diameter of the bar then o1 stands for the bar mark or identification code of that bar then 250 stands for the spacing center to center of the seven bars and b2 means these bars will be placed in the second bottom layer. This is basically what clause 4.22 will be trying to tell you. Now that we have done this, let's look at the next most important thing that I wanted to let you know before we actually detail any of our structural elements. So next up we have clause 4.2.3. This deals with the type of steel as we mentioned above. So Y stands for high yield steel, which is an average strength of 450 MPa. Then R stands for mild steel, which is an average strength of 250 MPa. Then Z or Z is going to be used if the steel you are placing is not going to be any of these two that we have talked about. But remember, you need to then explain what Z means on the specifications and on the drawings and in the bending schedules. This is important because if you put the wrong letter, the steel fixer may put mild steel bars where you need high yield steel and if that building fails, 
the client will take you to court not the steel fixer so be very careful or you will lose your money your license and your life in jail next up we will look at the placement symbols this is given in clause 4.2.6 titled location or comment well the best i can say here is you have to write notes down somewhere for reference or you just have to memorize these by hand. But the essence of this clause is that they are trying to just tell you that you don't just put any letter you want on the drawings. Each letter needs to stand for something. And the list given under this clause gives you the meaning of certain letters and what each letter should mean and they help you to understand what is being instructed on a drawing that you did not do and also so that the steel fixer knows what you are trying to say. If you remember when we were talking about clause 4.22 notation and placement, we discovered that B meant bottom layer and if you check under the list of symbols in clause 4.2.6 which is the current clause, B stands for bottom layer indeed and it even goes further to say B1 is for the lowest of the bottom layers, B2 is the second lowest of these bottom layers and B3 is for the third lowest of these bottom layers. Alright, now that we have covered this, the last thing of importance that I want us to look at is clause 4.4, the preferred spacing of reinforcement. Well, the issue here is you don't just dream up the spacing you want your bars to have. For example, you don't just say 110 millimeters, 213 millimeters, or 456 millimeters. No, no, no. The spacing you provide is governed by the codes and you have to stick to that. So, you will find that the minimum spacing the code recommends is 75 and from 75 to 200 millimeters, you have to increment your spacing in intervals of 25s. This means you go 75, 100, 125, 150, 175, then 200. Not 75, 90, 120, etc. Et then once you reach 200, you start going up or down. That is if, let's say, you had a spacing of 450 and you want to reduce it, you do so in intervals of 50s. So it's going to be 200, then 250, then 300, then 350, and so on. So make sure you're not just spacing them by any number that you like. Follow the code. Okay, now that we have covered all of this, this is it from me when it comes to the basics of detailed and reinforced concrete according to the South African Code of Practice. The rest of these rules, we will look at them when we start doing the actual detailing, so don't worry about that. The next video after this one, we will be detailing the foundations we designed in our How to Design a Double Story Building Playlist. So what are you waiting for? Subscribe to the channel, leave a like and comment and let's start detailing our structural elements together. Until next time, stay safe and don't sneeze. Wakanda!